Good evening, folks. Welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chaser Cyclone video update, courtesy of our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. My name is Chris Nitto. You can see where all the action was. That tropical low was very, very close to being named a tropical cyclone. It tracked too quickly to the east to become one. So all it needed was probably another three or, to be safe, six hours out there over the water. And I'm almost certain they would have named it Tropical Cyclone Yvette. As it happens, it ended up hitting the coast just below cyclone status way, way earlier than expected. So it wasn't expected to hit the coast till Thursday morning. It ended up hitting the coast around about 4 p.m. this afternoon. You can see the convection associated with that system continues to fire off near the centre of the system. It is attached to a fairly strong upper level trough here, which is also providing a fair amount of wind shear, not to mention, of course, a beautiful outflow channel here to the south, which is allowing that convection to build and, and then escape while, while re rebuilding over the top of itself as well. The other thing to note here is look at this beautiful monsoon pushing right through northern parts of, or far northern parts of Queensland. So the monsoon trough is bringing in a hell of a lot of moisture into this upper level trough system, funneling it through, and we're seeing widespread rainfall anywhere north of Townsville. This stage, nothing overly heavy on the east coast. Uh, there has been some very heavy rainfall on the western peninsula. Across the Queensland coast, we've got these showers on the southeast corner as well, unassociated with the monsoon, but they are certainly providing some moderate to heavy falls in parts. They are fairly patchy though. We've also got showers and thunderstorms associated with another upper level trough in the southern parts of Queensland, but look at this massive cloud coming through, cloud and rain, sorry, and on these echoes here, coming through from the monsoonal trough. We've also got easterly winds at the lower levels providing uh, the, some lower level showers as well. And the upper level trough in association with the monsoonal convergent flow is creating an absolute schmozzle up here in northeast Queensland. But as I say, as yet, the convergence at the lower levels of the atmosphere hasn't been overly spectacular and therefore we haven't seen very heavy falls from it. Beautiful radar imagery here of what's going on in the Northern Territory as well. So this is on the back end of the low. Uh, we're seeing this southwesterly to westerly flow coming in, uh, looking at widespread showers and thunderstorms across the top end region, or the base of the top end, and then also widespread rainfall just off the Arnhem Coast. That's once again the problem here is that a lot of this rain is falling just off the coast. This area of the Northern Territory has certainly been uh, certainly been lacking this wet season in terms of a good northwesterly flow to bring in the rainfall that they really need this time of year. So, and nothing's nothing's changed here. A lot of this rain is actually missing the coast. Alrighty, so our focus shifts away from the Gulf of Carpentaria now to what's going to happen over the northeast coast of Queensland. Now, in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours, we will see a low pressure system develop off the coast between Cairns and Cooktown. At this point in time, that low is expected to push fairly rapidly away to the east and should start to consolidate once it gets into the central or eastern Coral Sea. And you can see here that by the 23rd, the UK MET model may be going a little overboard, maybe not at this stage, but uh, looking at a 950 to 960 hectopascal system. So we're talking a significant Cat 3 or 4 tropical cyclone there on the UK MET. Look, at this stage, all tracking away to the southeast. There's no sign of any recurve of that system yet on computer models, in, and there probably won't be any sign of it at all into the future either. The GFS forecast model also predicting this low developing here, a little bit further to the east and a little bit further to the south, which means it has almost zero chance then of recurvature because it's heading too far to the south uh, and entrained or entangled would be a better word in some mid-level and upper level westerly winds. The other thing you can tell here from the GFS model is that it doesn't intensify the system as much at all. So it keeps it at around about 990 to 1000 hectopascal system. So very weak cyclone or more likely tropical low. The Canadian CMC computer forecast model here develops the low off the coast of far northern Queensland, very, very close to Cairns. So in the CMC scenario, the 18th is going to be a very wet period for the Cairns coastline. The other computer model's not that interested in developing it this close though, so uh, the chances are that it'll develop a little bit further to the east, a little bit further offshore, 
It'll drag, by the way, when this does start to happen on the 18th and 19th, all of that rain that's over northern Queensland will be dragged away to the east and the whole of northern Queensland will start to fine up on the Friday and then particularly the Saturday. But you can see here the system, once again, expected to move in an east to southeasterly direction. The FIM computer model as well pushes this system fairly rapidly away to the east, develops it off the coast of Cairns, pushes it away fairly quickly out here to the east towards the eastern Coral Sea. So looking at the European computer model here on Thursday morning, we have the low located somewhere in the southeast Gulf of Carpentary. Look, that looks to be wrong. This probably won't happen. Uh, so the computer model may have uh, just mistaken the motion of that low. Now that low that was in the Gulf is already firmly entrenched in here into the, the southern or into the base of the peninsula. So it's already a little bit off. So there, therefore we could be seeing a fairly inaccurate computer model projection here from the Euro. But let's just move on anyway and have a look because what it does in the medium term is actually pretty plausible. So it does develop this uh, low pressure system just to the east here of the Cairns to Cooktown area. This is what all the other computer models do. So it is definitely on board with that scenario. It's just this interesting little byplay between the remnants of the low that just hit the Gulf and this new load that develops off uh, the Queensland coast, east, Queensland's east coast, that's difficult at the moment, and it's modelling it's quite poorly. So what we then have is two low pressure centres in a, in a pretty well a deep trough here across the Coral Sea, and it takes a little while until one of those consolidates. So you can see both of them pushing eastwards, and then finally one starts to consolidate, one starts to get stronger, becomes a tropical cyclone. And that tropical cyclone then continues to push in a southeasterly direction uh, through to between Vanuatu and New Caledonia. It's really this little period coming up in the next uh, in the next couple of days that is very very interesting. After that, things get a little bit boring, especially in the current consensus, which is pushing everything eastwards. That means all of the weather clears off the Queensland region. Uh, and pretty well clears off northern Australia if that was to happen. But you can certainly see this low, still fairly weak feature located here on the western or central Cape York Peninsula, moving in a northerly direction here. Uh, we have this other secondary convergent area developing just off the coast here of far northern Queensland. And what we, and then what we then see if we continue with this model projection is that this low becomes a dominant feature, pushes out to the east fairly rapidly. This low sticks around up here, moving northwards in the northern peninsula region, and then off the Torres Strait, or off the uh, far northeastern Cape York Peninsula. And if we continue the projection there, you can see this one pushes east to New Caledonia. This one starts to develop, and uh, then starts to uh, push east slowly. But the point is here that these two would be steered in different directions in the longer term, because this one here that develops fairly quickly off the coast of Cairns and pushes east fairly quickly, which is what all of the computer models are showing at the moment, uh, this one here would be steered by a trough over the Coral Sea in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which would result in a east to southeasterly motion. Whereas our little friend further to the north and a little bit later would be steered very, very slowly back towards the southwest, towards the Queensland coast and then into the Gulf of Carpentaria. So it is certainly a unique situation to see two low pressure systems in this close proximity to each other. At this stage though, that one off the coast of Cairns is expected to become the dominant low and push away to the southeast. However, it will be interesting over the next 48 hours and that's why we'll continue to update you over the next 48 hours as to the byplay between the two systems that will be located in that general vicinity, so in this area here. Now let's take a look at what that's going to do to rainfall. So looking at an ensemble projection here, we can see moderate to heavy falls on the north tropical coast region here, and also moderate to heavy falls, possibly heavy to even some flood falls located over the southwestern parts of the peninsula. Also some moderate falls across the northeast Arnhem district in the next 24 hours. As we move on to the 24 to 48 hour period, once again, you have moderate falls, moderate to heavy falls possible here on the north tropical coast region, but all of the really heavy rain is now starting to push offshore. 
We also see a continuation of moderate to heavy falls up here in the northwestern parts of the peninsula and easing of showers and thunderstorms across the Northern Territory. As we move into days two to three, you can see that almost all of the heavy rain is now well and truly off the coast of Queensland. So by uh, sort of the Friday into Saturday period, we've only got showers and showers left along the northeast peninsula and uh, heading probably as far south as about Cooktown to Port Douglas. But other than that, uh, it finds up fairly quickly. So once those lows develop off the coast, they will drag a lot of the moisture away with them and we're left in a fairly dry flow across Queensland. You can also see showers and thunderstorms are certainly decreasing across the Northern Territory as we get drier southeasterly winds pushing through in the two to four day time frame. So looking at that on the bomb maps, you can see showers and thunderstorms across the Kimberley region. Once again, the top end coastal region is expecting to see widespread showers, but most of them once again off the coast, not making it onto the coast. Across Queensland, this is our focus area. So from about Ingham northwards tomorrow is our focus area. Uh, certainly a stabilisation anywhere further to the south. As we go to Friday, those lows develop and push offshore, take a lot of the rain with them, except for the northwest peninsula region where we continue to see that heavier rain. Uh, but across most of northeast Queensland, we start to see a decrease in rainfall as those lows develop and push away to the east. On Saturday, we continue to see further uh, decrease in rainfall across the northern parts of Queensland and the Northern Territory. Now the monsoonal influence here has now waned and we're down to a fairly dryish pattern across to Sunday and once again we have very little rainfall to speak of in Queensland. There will still be some showers and thunderstorms across the southern and southeastern parts associated with some weak upper troughs that are pushing through that region. But other than that folks the monsoonal influence is on its way out. It was short, it was great while it lasted but unfortunately if things are going to go to plan it will likely push away to the east fairly rapidly. But we do still have a small glimmer of hope here that the one of the two lows, so hopefully this Gulf one will track up here to the north, redevelop and then push back to the west and bring the monsoon back for a second burst. But if that doesn't happen and we see the more general scenario, which is that the low will push in, in out here and then away to the east fairly rapidly, then all of this rain will be gone very, very quickly. Thanks for watching. It's still a very complex pattern and it will be until one of these lows in the Coral Sea get itself together and then we'll have a very good idea as to what's going to happen into the future, whether they're going to go east towards Vanuatu or whether there's that possibility that we could see them come back towards the coast. I'll have another update for you tomorrow night. Subscribers, don't forget, you'll have an update in the morning at around about 10 or 11 a.m.